it's award season and also time for the annual Canadian Screen Awards. I spoke to several of this year's nominees. Here's what they had to say. Congratulations on your nomination tonight. So, The Captive, why is this story uh, being told now? Is this the right time? Or why do you feel that this is the right time for that story? Well, I think with all these stories of women being found abducted and held captive for, you know, in these horrific situations, it's exactly the right time to understand, you know, how insidious this problem is and how, you know, there are these very, very evil, dark forces that ripple through our society. So, yes, of course it's the right time, yeah. How do you keep your character fresh from season to season? Is it, is it the writers? How do you prepare between one season and another? You know, it's been really collaborative. I mean, the whole team has been an ensemble piece, uh, from the writers to the producers to, uh, you know, the network and, and, and ourselves. And it, it, every season we would sit down and we'd talk about, you know, what would be an interesting challenge for the characters. And certainly every single season I've done that. And, um, you know, I've just thought of things that would be really interesting to challenge that character and challenge the perception of, of, of normal uh, perceptions of characters and people in society, which is what our show does really well. Tell us about Lisa Mason. Tell us about your character. Who is she? Um, Lisa is, is kind of the straight person amongst a sea of nuts and uh, it, it's, it's, pretty, uh, it's, it's pretty cool but she gets to um, this year that she's kind of losing it a little bit. I think the school is finally breaking her. <laughs> Tell us about your character. What type of guy is he? Uh, well, Daniel Addison is uh, he's a political junkie, so he's a guy that is obsessed with politics. He tries to get out of the game in the best laid plans, but it keeps dragging him back in. And so the series, six-part miniseries, uh, where he kind of takes his journey, where he kind of rediscovers his love of democracy and his passion for politics. Um, and it's really funny, too. You're a veteran of this industry, and the Canadian and TV industry is flourishing right now. Film, TV. What do we have to do as Canadians to take it to the next level? Is it a star system? Well, how do we get to the next level of development? Uh, you know, the next level is just to continue what we're doing. You know, I think the, it'll naturally grow. Like, with the industry is in a really strong place, like you said, and like, you know, people love what we're making, so we're just going to keep making it. That's really what it's about. We're in the best place we've been in in my lifetime as far as the content we're creating, the shows we're creating, and the, the wider reach that our shows are, they're becoming international and global now, um, and people are watching Canadian shows. So there's a, we've lost that stigma. Uh, I would say that uh, a Canadian star system, which I think we're developing, we're not quite there yet, but I think a star system is sort of the f next step. That's what we need. I think people don't tune into Canadian TV because they want to see the actors. They tune in because the shows are good. Our star system is building, and, and uh, it's events like these that, that really um, make it happen. And um, I, I'm just so thankful that we we have events like like the Canadian Screen Awards and. And I, I think it was really smart to blend the two, the, the film and, and the, uh, the TV. And, and it's definitely really exciting as an actor to come in and be amongst all these amazing, talented people. The Canadian Screen Week is all about building a star system. It's all about building awareness and connection between the film industry, the television industry, the stars in our uh, industry, and the people at home. We have to develop good stories that appeal to a worldwide audience. Uh, which is what I try and do, you know, with the Resident Evils and Pompeii and Mortal Instruments and Silent Hill. That's my modus operandi and it works for me and I think, uh, you know, appealing to a mass audience is the only way to uh, break through the clutter. Speaking of Resident Evil, can you tell us anything about that project? I know it's uh, 2016 uh, when it's being released. Well, there will be one uh, final uh, Resident Evil, uh, Resident Evil Retribution with uh, Mila. Uh, we're looking to film starting in August or September, and it'll be released uh, about eight months later. That's all I can really tell you about it. Well, let's talk about the Oscars for a little bit. Did, did you see Birdman? That's my first question. Yes, of course I did, yeah. It's a very actor-friendly film, and I loved it. And I've been a Michael Keaton fan for a long time, and in art too, so... Yeah, I mean, it was very much in my zone, um, and my wheelhouse, so... No, I sat down and, and loved that, yeah. Like everybody, I was torn between Boyhood and Birdman, because I thought, you know, Birdman is, is amazing. Boyhood, 
is this accomplishment on a whole nother level based on the way it was done and the sort of the the, the, the ex, this expansion of the world over all these years and uh, and as a as a filmmaker myself knowing how insane that process must have been and how well they pulled it off I love Birdman but I think it's a very special thing I also happen to have loved boyhood very much and so I was happy for both of them I think it was a bit upsetting uh, for some people that Birdman won I think you know a movie about people who are in the movie business is gonna find maybe more support among Academy voters in the States than among the general population thanks for watching T.TV I'm Justin Edmead see you next time